So I wanted to explain why this is what it is. Uh, and you have to say it out loud, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so the reason I say disappear is a Roman imperial presence in the West as opposed to like follow Rome or something much nicer and more concise, is that I'm specifically addressing in this paper the disappearance of the imperial structures, like the administrative structures, taxation, military, those kinds of things, and not necessarily Roman culture or the social influences and that kind of stuff, because I would argue that that didn't actually disappear for a long time, if ever. Um, so I'm going to begin by talking about how the Goths are always presented as the beginning uh, and almost one of the main causes of the fall of the Roman Empire, since they were one of the first barbarian groups to actually enter Roman territory, sack Rome, and settle in the province belonging to the empire. Uh, however, I would argue that though the first victories of the Gothic tribes, including most famously the Battle of Adrianople in uh, 378 AD uh, and the sack of Rome in 410 AD, um, they all had great symbolic significance and they dealt a psychological blow to the idea of stability and the immortality of Rome. Uh, those victories did not truly really precipitate <coughs> the disappearance of the Roman presence in the west of the empire. Uh, while these defeats were great losses for Rome, uh, they had relatively limited real functional long-lasting impact on the state of the empire. Sorry, I got a cold somewhere. This is the worst time. Uh, <coughs> point is, these victories um, for the Goths didn't end the empire really uh, because they were somewhat transient in their impact. Um, by contrast, uh, it was the kingdom of the Visigoths uh, uh, that was one of the first clear and tangible signs of the breakdown of Roman, Roman authority because it involved a permanent loss of a Roman province, province to a barbarian group. Um, now, I will mention how traditionally the distinction between the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths developed after the sack of Roman in 410 when one group of Goths was allocated as federati to the region of Gaul, becoming the Western Goths, or Visigoths, in 419, to this little region right here, the, the darker shaded one. Um, and another faction of the Gothic tribes remained in Italy, becoming Eastern Goths, or Ostrogoths. Uh, while the Visigoths accepted the land allocated to them by the emperor with all the terms attached, they very quickly took full control of it and expanded their dominion to include all of the bigger shade of the area, uh, which is kind of a huge deal. Uh, and they basically controlled most of southern Gaul and the entire Iberian Peninsula by about 518, which I'm going to show in the brighter map. Um, this land was traditionally Roman, uh, and it would never belong to the empire again. Uh, that's becoming one of the major contributions to the true disappearance of the Roman imperial influences in the West. Uh, after the defeat by the Franks in 507, the Visigoths lost control over Gaul. And I'm sorry, that's a map of like the whole known world, but uh, you can see how the Visigothic kingdom does not include what is modern France anymore. Uh, and despite this territorial loss, I would say that the, their impact can still be seen as paving the way for the establishment of a Frankish kingdom north of the Pyrenees, which will also be troublesome for Roman imperial presence. Uh, but after 507, the Visigothic Kingdom assumed the general shape it would have for several centuries, and the territorial state uh, loosely aligned with the natural borders of the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, therefore, I will argue that the main lasting impact of the Visigoths on the Roman Empire was the formation and development of the Visigothic Kingdom in Spain, and the transformation and eventual disappearance of the Roman administrative, economic, and political structures there. Uh, while the Visigothic Kingdom retained some elements of Roman culture and legal tradition, the demise of clear economic ties to Rome, together with increasing internal diversification of Spain and religion, religious controversies, uh, helped create a new Spanish identity, uh, which can be seen uh, in the Visigothic law codes that combined Roman influences with the structures uh, suited specifically to the needs of the region. Uh, thus, the Visigoth acquisition of the Iberian Peninsula allowed for the development of a distinct Visigothic culture in Spain, which led to the erasure of Roman authority and identity are strongly contributing to the fading out of the Roman influence in the West. Uh, now, the Iberian Peninsula belonged to Rome for over 500 years, and I'm sure most of you know better than me. Uh, and by the time the arrival of the Goths, it was pretty Roman, but it retained much of its internal diversity, somewhat integrating Roman culture and administration with pre-existing local traditions. Uh, Roman influence spread throughout the cities, uh, and the presence of imperial administration helped collect taxes and guide major economic activities and exports for the benefit of Rome. The province gained a me measure of security and economic prosperity from being part of the empire, but it did not have an independent economy or an established local culture, and its officials were mostly appointed from Rome. 
Uh, the political instability of the empire in the 4th and 5th centuries already affected the peninsula before the arrival of the Gauls, with the invasion by groups such as Suedi and Alemanni, who established their own kingdoms in the territory of Spain, uh, and also with the passage of other barbarian groups through the territory, such as the Vandals. In this context, the permanent settlement of the Visigoths in the region and the relative lack of resistance they encountered, I think, uh, can be understood a lot more clearly. Uh, however, it was this settlement that functionally severed the link uh, between Hispania and Rome, and that made Spain into an independent kingdom, independent kingdom, uh, diminishing the influence of the empire in the West. Uh, the establishment of the Visigothic kingdom resulted in the decline of external trade and political links to the larger Mediterranean, instead contributing to the localization and diversification of the economy and culture of the Iberian Peninsula. This process led to the establishment of an independent political and cultural entity determined by the natural borders of the peninsula. Uh, the religious politics and the legal tradition of Visigothic Spain reflect the way the internal diversity and the transformation of Roman and Barbarian influences created a new identity for the country of Spain. Now, one of the most vital consequences of the Visigothic takeover uh, was the disappearance of Roman economic structures and the decline of long-distance trade. Uh, with the establishment of a new kingdom came the severing of clear commercial ties between the peninsula and the rest of the Mediterranean. Uh, and even internal trade became less far-reaching. Uh, this led to diversification and localization of production, which eventually made Spain more economically self-sufficient, uh, but also decreased the degree of specialization, and thus the quantity and quality of mass-produced goods. This localization of the economy is first evident in the emergence of new regional currency minted in the Iberian Peninsula, and intended primarily for local use. In terms of the empire, Hispania was part of a greater economic trade network, where it was mainly a supplier of raw materials, like various metals from its mines and certain types of olives and wine. Um, outside of these activities, which were at least in part governmentally supervised, the province was not very highly industrialized, uh, and therefore local mint minting of Roman coins was largely controlled by Rome. And the amounts minted depended on the needs of the empire at large, um, and not on the immediate requirements within Hispania. After the barbarian invasions, this economic situation underwent, underwent a major change since Spain was now commercially disconnected from the empire. Even the early invaders, such as the Suevi and Alemanni, minted some new local coins to supply their economic needs. Uh, and after the establishment of the much larger Visigothic kingdom, the need for an independently minted currency was apparent. Um, this new currency served to unite the disparate and geographically diverse regions of Spain, uh, and it provided a local and flexible medium for economic activities that were increasingly contained within the region. Uh, now, the decline and significant disappearance of trade links to the larger economy of the empire prompted the diversification and increased distinctiveness of regional production. The coastal cities retained some commercial links to the larger Mediterranean, but their trade was increasingly focused on just luxury goods. Uh, and the Visigothic kingdom relied on local production for all its regular needs. Moreover, separate regions of the peninsula tended to be self-sufficient to a large degree, causing production to be less specialized which likely decreased the quality of material goods, but also made the regions less vulnerable to economic crises linked to exports. Um, now, the reason for this diversification is partly the geography of Spain, because you have a lot of like valleys and mountains, so the regions are naturally kind of separate from each other. Uh, and I would say that is the currency and the other things that we'll discuss that really link them together. Uh, but this diversification and internalization of the economy was an important change from the prevalence of important goods in the Roman period and it arguably led to decrease in the quality of life in the region, since the local goods were often inferior in quality to the ones imported from elsewhere in the empire. However, it's important to note that the differences between the resources uh, and economies of the various regions of Spain, such as the, the, between the northern and south, the southern towns, led to a degree of internal diversity which provided the kingdom with more effective economic independence. This independence contributed to a greater cultural barrier with Rome, since the territory was no longer dependent on the constant contact with the empire, and imported fewer goods, people, and also ideas from the outside, contributing to the development of a distinct Spanish identity. Uh, furthermore, the disappearance of Spanish economic ties to Rome uh, weakened the state of the imperial economy in general, thus undermining the Roman power in the West as a whole. Uh, coupled with the takeover, takeover of North Africa by the Vandals, the loss of the Diocese of Hispania uh, damaged the foundations of imperial economy by cutting off the imports of raw materials, uh, and it left Rome without the historic supplies and necessary resources. Uh, therefore, the economic changes brought about by the Visigothic conquest of Spain and the establishment of their kingdom decreased.
Strowman access to resources and created a new economically independent state in Iberia, thus permanently reducing imperial power in the West. Um, the structure of land allocation and taxation in the Visigothic Kingdom also reflected a very significant shift towards localization and the demise of a centralized or Rome-oriented tax system. Uh, one of the most functionally and culturally important manifestations of Roman presence in Hispania uh, was the sophisticated apparatus of imperial administration and tax collection. Uh, the invasion of the Suevi and Alemanni, as well as the passage of other barbarian groups through the region, definitely destabilized, destabilized, destabilized? destabilized. <laughs> uh, the administrative structures in the region. Uh, but the Visigothic takeover was really the point of near complete demise of the taxation system. Uh, unlike the Ostrogoths in Italy, the Visigoths did not preserve the old centralized systems of taxation and land ownership and did not strive for accommodation and integration of the Roman elites as much as the other groups that invaded the empire. Uh, land in Hispania was allocated to Visigothic nobles and warriors, and the current tenants occupying the land paid their taxes directly to the new owner. This owner then passed some of the revenue on to the king, but most of the collection took place locally, pointing to a newly decentralized system of land ownership. This paved the way for the emergence of an early manorial system, where the tenants owed their duties directly to the local lord, instead of taking part in the more global and centralized system of government and taxation. So it's actually the beginning of feudalism, if you want to use that word, which is a medievalist you shouldn't. Um, the administrative link to Rome is also severed quickly, uh, since even in the Kingdom of Gaul, under the initial hospitalitas arrangement in the little shaded area I showed before, uh, the Visigoths took over all rent, land revenues from the region, and this did not change in the like, later kingdoms. In 520, when the Ostrogothic king Theodoric called for an economic support of the Visigoths, they offered it on equal terms, demonstrating the status of Spain as an equal kingdom, and not as a province subordinate to Rome. The Visigoths and the Ostrogoths maintained largely amicable relations, uh, but they were not always substantiated with material help, like when Theodoric sent a letter to Clovis rebuking him for attacking his nephew Alaric, king of the Visigoths. The letter was threatening, and yet the Ostrogoths offered little, little military support to the Visigoths, uh, showing that the two states, while generally, generally allied and connected by networks of kin, were politically very independent. Uh, the localized administrative system in the Visigothic kingdom supported this independence, since it was loosely centered on the king and had few remnants of the Roman structures. Uh, furthermore, while the Visigoths did not usually pressure the local population to adopt their customs, uh, the localized administration helped permeate the country better by creating a more direct link between the local Roman, lo Roman landowning aristocrats and the Goths to whom they now had to pay their taxes. Uh, the old elites had a strong incentive to integrate into the new society in an attempt to further their status and ensure survival. Uh, and this meant that within a few generations, uh, the clear lines between Romans and the barbarians began to really blur. Uh, Sidonius and Polinarius, a Roman aristocrat living in gold, uh, he lived and wrote under Visigothic rule, uh, and in his letters he made it clear that he believes that the, the barbarians are a lot inferior to Roman heritage and education. However, his son, Apollinaris, fought on the side of the Visigoths in the Battle of Hawaii, uh, where they lost well to Paulus and the Franks, who lost the chunk of modern France. Uh, therefore, despite, uh, despite the father's apparent distaste for the barbarians, uh, they elicited a degree of loyalty and support from uh, a member of his own family since fighting with a barbarian army for a barbarian king can hardly be seen as very Roman. Um, therefore, the new government of the Visigoths was clearly at least somewhat effective in controlling the old elites and integrating them into the new kingdom, replacing the Roman imperial and administrative presence with new structures of government. Um, nonetheless, the Visigoths did not want to be seen as Roman, partly because the, if they were to claim loyalty to the empire, uh, they would have to accept the authority of the eastern part of the empire, which you can see on the map. Um, uh, and they really did not want to do that because the Western Roman Empire no longer formally existed and the remaining empire in the East uh, claimed the right to inherit uh, all the provinces of the old empire. Now, as you can see, uh, the Eastern Empire was also expanding under the reign of Justinian, which someone else is going to talk about later, uh, and it maintained partial control over part of the Iberian Peninsula for some time after Justinian, that little part of modern Spain right here. Um, one of the ways in which the Visigoths considered themselves distinct from Romans was their espousal of the Aryan branch of Christianity in opposition to the Orthodox position. Uh, the theological distinction between the two confessions consists of a disagreement about the nature of the relationship between the persons within the Trinity. 
Now, Arianism maintains that God the Father is greater than the Son in parallel to earthly father-son relationships, whereas the Nicene Orthodox position upheld by the Eastern Roman Empire uh, defines all the persons of the Trinity as equal and co-eternal, together constituting, constituting the Godhead, which is a really complicated dispute, which I'm going to say that this difference is really not the main reason most Visigoths rejected Orthodoxy, um, especially in the first centuries of the Visigothic Kingdom. Uh, there were clear external and internal political advantages to maintaining a religious distinction between the barbarians uh, and the Romans in Spain. Arianism permitted the newcomers to the area to maintain its distinct identity and a degree of separation in the early years of the kingdom, and thus facilitated the development of Gothic cultural and political identity. Uh, in later years, the, support, uh, the claim to support Arianism was a useful tool in justifying political dissent against the Catholic bishops and nobles within the country, uh, and it played its part in the internal politics of the kingdom, formalizing and validating conflicts between various bishops and officials. The idea of a somewhat functionalist approach to this uh, heresy is supported by the general lack of a persecution of Catholics or any serious attempts to convert the local population. Uh, it has long been suggested that Arianism prevented the Visigoths from blending in with the locals. Uh, this is most likely, at least partly, intentional. Um, another useful conse consequence of Arianism for the Goths is the unifying power of it. The Visigoths formed into a group led by a king in the context of the Roman Empire uh, during and after the sack of Roman 410. Uh, the exact origins of the Goths as a people are unclear, and the contemporary sources present uh, an apocryphal and seemingly unreliable narrative. Uh, linguistic and archaeological evidence seem to suggest that the Gothic tribes were nomads from Eurasia and they were not unified in any distinguishable way. Even as Federati of the Empire in the 4th century, they were not a unified nation, but instead a number of tribes with separate leaders and some of distinct customs. Therefore, the formation of the Visigothic Kingdom uh, was not the establishment of a new territorial state by a unified group uh, of ethnically homogeneous people, Instead, it was part of the process of the formation of a unified Visigothic identity. Uh, in the absence of true unifying traditions, and especially in the new context of settled life, the religious distinctiveness and unity that came from espousing an Aryan distinct doctrine uh, was instrumental to asserting the influence and cohesion of the Visigoths in Spain. Thus, Arianism helped distinguish Visigoths in Spain internally, in addition to opposing the orthodoxy of the Byzantine Empire. Uh, it was therefore instrumental to defining and shaping the development of a new and independent country in Spain, and with it the decline of the presence of Roman influence and power. Uh, another thing that the Visigoths did in Spain to define themselves as a people was the publication of new law codes under the Visigothic kings, uh, like Eurek and Alaric. Uh, these codes are largely based on the Roman legal tradition, with some evidence of Germanic elements. However, the approach to the compilation of these codes reflects a desire to particularize the general tradition of Roman jurisprudence in order to better suit the context of Visigothic Spain and to reassert the authority of the king as the main legislative authority. In an economically, politically, and religiously diverse kingdom, these law codes, especially the Code of Alaric, uh, which is usually interpreted as a territorial law code, uh, were one of the main sources of cohesion and unity throughout the territory. Alaric's code is based on several of the compilation of codices of the Eastern Empire, as well as the writings of classical Roman jurists. It includes large parts of the Theodosian Code, in fact it's one of the sources for how we know about the Theodosian Code, uh, as well as some other compilations, uh, some made within, with the imperial authority and some compiled independently by the jurists. However, the Alaric's code is based mainly on the provincial forms of law, of law that were uh, of direct relevance to Spain. Uh, and thus it adapts the tradition to suit the circumstances. Uh, therefore, it adopts a syncretic approach to law, where the most useful pieces of Roman legislation are compiled and published together, even if they were not originally part of the same code structure. The selective implementation of Roman law by the Visigothic kings uh, placed the Roman tradition under their legislative and political control. It can be said uh, that the reason for a relative lack of distinctive and barbarian influences on these codes is the functional absence of a coherent Visigothic legal tradition suitable for settled life. Uh, since the groups that would form the Visigoths spent the previous century living near the empire and always, often employed by it, it is likely that they were already familiar and accustomed to Roman laws. Uh, <clears throat> because of this, the dominance of Roman law of the, in the Visigothic law codes becomes a sign of a shared and transforming legal tradition. 
The codes published by Yurik and Alaric are selective and emphasize the authority of the king to make judgments on which laws are appropriate for his kingdom. And therefore, the king used the Roman legal tradition to suit his needs, while highlighting that he was the ultimate authority of legislation. Uh, this may not have reflected the full reality of the political situation, since the kings in Visigothic Spain were not always in full administrative control of the state, but it reflected the ideal of power of the king that negates the supremacy of Roman legislature. The local code directly referencing Visigoths in its title gave the king and the kingdom of Spain a sense of legitimacy and independence, thus removing it from the United Empire and severing the links to Rome uh, as, even as they adopted some Roman laws. Uh, I would say that the political and social structure of Visigothic Spain were very diverse and varied, united by a king and his laws, but much more localized and regionalized than that of the Roman province of Hispania. Uh, in addition to the clear and direct economic effect of cutting off the supply of resources to and from Rome, the Visigothic takeover removed this territory from Roman administrative control forever and contributed to the creation of a new distinct state in the Iberian Peninsula. The internal diversity of that state included Romans and barbarians, Arians and Catholics, bishops and kings and aristocrats and warriors and artisans and peasants. The main thing they had in common was the area where they lived, the, where they lived, the Iberian Peninsula, defined by the natural borders. Uh, therefore, the territorial state of Spain slowly came into existence from the amalgamation of numerous separate traditions and identities. Uh, the separate sections of society did not create clear and easy divides. Instead, uh, their combination gave each person a unique set of experiences and traditions. The common king and laws, as well as the opposition of powerful outsiders, uh, made them come together and form a new country, neither Roman nor barbarian, but a mixture of the two. Uh, the attack of the Franks met, made sons of Roman aristocracy fight for the, for the Goths, and the threat of the Byzantine power created the new unique religious landscape of Spain. Uh, therefore, the internal diversity of the early Visigothic kingdom created a new country and a new identity, which by the virtue of its distinctiveness and autonomy undermined the Roman imperial presence in favor of a new 